the biggest, the biggest trouble you guys are going to have is with one of your aspects of your ego. Okay. Your ego has three aspects. The first aspect is the mask pretends it's not true. Like, let's say I'm, I'm actually dirt poor. Okay. But my ego is like, Absolutely not. We're not going, we're not going to be seen as that. We're going to live like we at least got something. Okay. So the mask of I'm actually my self-concept is poor, but I'm living like the rich person, or like I'm buying expensive clothes when I don't have the money for it. So that's one of the masks is an altar. It's how your self-concept is, it will wear a mask to to shield you from actually having to feel the poverty. Okay. So that's your first mask. And that's a really hard one to unpack sometimes because you believe it to be true. But let's look at your bottom line. Your self-concept is crap. So it might be that I have a poverty complex or scarcity complex. I need to take a look at that. You know, if you on payday are paying for everyone to have dinner, but you don't know how you're going to pay your rent next week, that's a mask. Okay. And that's there so that you don't have to feel like you are in poverty. And that we're going to help, we're going to get to that one. That one's actually not hard to get rid of because that's actually who you really are. Your self-concept is the thing that's messed up. The most difficult one in the world to get off is our victim. Okay. The victim mindset of your ego is the most difficult part of you to change. Like, I can't, I can't, I've tried. It doesn't work for how long, you know? And again, you don't change your mind. No posture strap is going to work, girl. Because it's the mind that's keeping you hunched over, not your body. Your body is just following your mind. We have to hide. Okay? I must hide myself. I don't like how I look. Oh, okay. So you see how it's a double negative. It's like I hide myself because I don't like how I look. But when I stand up so that I can fix myself, I can't because I don't like how I look. It's a double negative. The victim is the most difficult, difficult, difficult part of our self-concept to change because this, the victim actually gets out of blame. If you look in the definition of, of going all the way in, and I studied this immensely, of victim, victims are not to blame. When you're a victim, you, you can't be in trouble. You're a victim. This is what stops you from fixing your self-concept. This is why when you do get an injury, you're like, your, your ego is like, oh, thank God. Now nobody can blame us for being lazy. Okay. Because the blame is what keeps you from actually changing it. So I'm going to put all the blame on you because it's all you. You are the only one creating your reality. Nobody's doing this to you. Yes, someone did this to you your first seven years, but now it is your job to change what someone else did, not to keep reliving their destiny, not to keep affirming that they were right about you. This is your time to say, you were never right about me, mom. You were never right about me, dad. I am this. And the universe will literally mold around who you say you are. But the victim is so hard to get rid of because you've had so much success in it. Okay. People write to me all the time. Oh, can you hit, fix my grandmother with cancer? Can you do this? Can you put your hands on somebody? Hell no. You know why? That would take away their entire identity. Some of you get out of a lot of shit when you're hurt. Now, it's stuff you don't want to do. That's why I said, okay, let me give you a million dollars. Your body would be like, whoop, 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 whoop. I'm ready. <laughs> because you would actually be doing things you want to do. So getting hurt and sick and fat helps you get out of things you can't do. This is a really hard class for you. I know. This was my wake-up call. That it was me that was creating all of this. And see, when you get out of things like so, like social life, like if you don't feel good, you get out of social life. So you actually get out of your own life. So you are actually playing no role whatsoever except paying your bills and eating food and watching something. That is probably 90% of your reality. And then you go into social situations and that probably triggers you. So your social battery gets drained and you're like, why am I even here? Even if it's your family. That's why I said, how much of your week is actually fun? What do you get the most joy for, from? And when you are in those joyful moments, do you feel joy or are you worried? Are you worried for someone? Are you scared for them? Now think about this question. Who in your reality that is in your intimacy, into me I see, 
in the fellowship of your communions, who is living the best life that you can find in your reality? Is it your kids? Are your kids living a better life than you? Is it your spouse? Does they have a better life than you? Okay, because that means your self-concept is that you are, you're running a hero complex and you're a people pleaser, which means that you aren't even living the life that you're paying for. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about self-concept, guys. Your problems are right now your purpose. So your problems birth out all of your ideas, all of your shit that you're doing, who you attract, because your problem is your main focus. I'm going to tell you right now, your body is not a problem. Your body is going to be the easiest thing in the world if you actually create a purpose for yourself. That's why I want you to be thinking about this week. Who is this archetype of myself? We all have like this aspect that we would love to be. You know, like if I said you go anywhere and do anything, like what would your persona be? Because you have a victim persona, you have a perpetrator persona, and you wear the mask of opposite persona. Okay, bougie, broke, whatever. Vicariously living, I don't know who that is. Okay, whatever it is you're living. So you got those three personas. So who are we going to create now? What would you do if you were thin? If you were healthy? If you could wear anything at any store? Okay, well, what would you wear? If you had all the money in the world and you didn't have a J-O-B, where would you go this weekend? What would you do? Who would you go with? If your relationships weren't at odds and you got along with women and you got along with your spouse, what would you love to do with them? What would you love to do with your kids if you had the money to do that? Where would you be living? What would you drive? Okay. What would you have on the books for the next four weeks? Write these questions down, because here's the thing. As you start to look at this, you're going to see that the only reason that you've been sick, broke, and unhealthy is because you have created a life that is best for the body to stay that way. 